So how much does this game cost, if any? It's three bucks. It is honestly very worth it. There's very little to it, but it's still super compelling all the same. See so if we can fight the uh, spider this run. I think we might be able to. I mean, my baseline fishing and farming speeds are almost times two. Uh, same thing with my wooding, wood, uh, wooding, wood cutting speeds. I'm gonna call the prediction here. Jamie didn't realize uh, what it was. Wander was it? Uh, no way he will. Oh, is that? Uh, wait. Wander realized this isn't about the hut. It's fair. I didn't. I actually don't look at predictions that much, to be honest. I should. I might as well make the cart. I don't necessarily know if it made that run better, but it certainly wasn't actually that big of a deal all the same. I guess with a game like this, I totally could, could just pay attention to more stuff like that. Most of the time, I just do not look, though. Building the wooden hut, uh, or getting the wooden hut built faster also helps every run. Oh, yeah. The sooner we get that down, the slower the food gain is. Okay. The cart means you can hold more food so you can do stuff longer. It still does not actually mean a time gain. It just means you have to switch activities less often, kind of. Though, it can also mean that you run out of food while you're doing a task. And then you have to kind of panic a little bit. If you're fast enough building the hut, you can probably do it before gathering any berries. True. I guess that's a good point, actually. Huh. I didn't really think of potentially doing hut first, because I usually just think about getting food first. But yeah, cutting my rates that much would actually probably be pretty good. Either way, this is going nice and quickly. And yeah, you do level up the the fast or the higher you, or you level up faster the higher your skill is too, which is super good. There's actually a bonus for building structures before four minutes if I read correctly. Huh. I wonder if there's any other like really useful early things that you can get. So did I build the murder hut already? I did. Just barely. And then I immediately went into death spiral starvation mode. Okay, so what do we do now? Catch fish, build campfire, probably build campfire, then catch fish. Honestly though, maybe not, maybe not. Let's skip the fish part. Let's see if I can get access, uh, cause right now my degradation is, is pretty low, so Maybe instead of rushing fish preemptively, I leave that for later and try and get murder hut sooner than sooner than later. Because yeah, earlier health is dropping uh, so low you can wait quite a while before food. Yeah, so I think I might skip the whole fish business for a bit. And try and rush getting the second hut. Because yeah, my priorities are all wrong. Uh, okay, so we want to dig stone. See, so yeah, right now, degradation ain't too bad. I still don't think it's going to work. Let me try to run this in the background and see if I can catch up. You might not catch up today, but if you play it more tonight, you absolutely will. Building this sucker still takes forever, but if I can get my my digging and my wood cutting skills, I mean, my wood cutting base skills already three times faster. Like that's that's solid. 
eventually I'm going to be able to eat forests for breakfast. So I believe once this gets to one, then we need to maybe start looking into fish. But before that, we don't even need to... We kind of need some berries. Okay, I'm going to put it there. Because all we need is... Yeah? All we need is 20 stone. I think it's doable. We're six days away from the second Voice of Cards game. Yeah, Square Enix has... Not sent me a copy, but they've already uh, kind of offered to send me a copy. I am I am looking forward to it. I did not expect to like it as much as I did, and I'm looking forward to the second one because it's the kind of perfect bite-sized level JRPG, where you just kind of play it for a couple hours, and then it's done, and it's a full complete experience. Unless they bloated it more, we'll see how it goes. But the, my my hope with Voice of Cards, uh, what is it, the Forsaken Maiden, uh, it manages to kind of run with the theme. Maybe go a little bit further, just like a little bit of depth. And uh, like a little bit of depth and complexity would go so dang far. Mainly just being able to pick more of a build with a character. I guess you could kind of pick what cards you use. That's a video for... Or that's, that's a discussion for another video, though. Okay, can I get this? I played a mobile game about a robot who wanted to build a forge to make a family. And it was similar set up to this. I think there's probably quite a number of these pseudo-survival games that exist really specifically around the <clears throat> exist really specifically around the idea of survival uh survival sandbox kind of incremental progression I actually like the idea of the the thought of the voice of cards series being quick release as long as the stories remain engrossing. Yeah, and as long as they don't get long. Like, that's that's my main thing, is it, that if they start going on, like, 20, 30 hours, then I need them to slow down a little bit, because then I'm going to get bored. But, like, once a year, give or take, on kind of a bite-sized comfort food JRPG, very much is something I'm actually quite interested in. I don't know how many of you guys have played the uh, Final Fantasy Pixel remasters, but I... I got into those kind of recently uh, just to play on my own and it's actually pretty good uh, like th those games hold up shockingly well let's get like three fish then cook them then go back to getting the uh, the hut if I can because I need 12 wood and five stone Do this get rid of that because I've still got a couple of cooked fish I got one okay back to digging stone there we go uh, let's see Isle Dragon Roars was a nice calmer experience after finishing Tales of Rise I actually have not played Tales of Rise yet that's kind of on my to-do list for uh chart I don't want to say charming JRPGs high quality JRPGs because I played a little bit of it for my birthday stream and then stopped because I couldn't record a series on it because uh, the characters would not stop shouting their attacks out. And that's like instantly a deal breaker for me as a content creator just because I can't talk over that. Uh, but I'm really curious about like where it went. Because the last time I played... Um, the last time I played a Tales of game, I guess I had done like a little bit of Zestiria, but I didn't like it as much. But I, I was... I spend weeks playing uh, Tales of Symphonia obsessively and just trying to get it uh... that's I mean I guess I'll get the wood question mark and we want the fish get rid of the wood cook the fish there we go yeah the attack voice was too much it really was it 
Tales of Rise was a good game. It was also considerably shorter than the last ones. Put 60 to 70 hours into it compared to 80 to 100. Eh, I mean, I think... Uh, different strokes for different folks. For me, that still sounds pretty long. Though, I mean, I guess I put 70 hours into Death Stranding, so it's not so bad. I think I, I just have to uncouple my head from the idea of... Uh, long games being bad because of YouTube. And so, I don't know. Maybe I'll give it a shot over the next couple weeks. Oh, right. I was talking about the Pixel Remasters. I'm so distractible right now, unfortunately. Um, but the Final Fantasy Pixel Remasters, especially, like, the OG ones, like Final Fantasy 1 through 3, uh, are all 10 to 20 hours long. And it was just such a perfect length for them. They weren't particularly deep. And, like, I can see why a lot of people would be kind of eh on playing them nowadays. Uh, but there definitely was this kind of feeling of just kind of comfy charm playing them comparatively. And so, like, for Voice of Cards, that was the first JRPG I'd play in a while that kind of evoked a similar feeling. Where it just felt like, yeah, this is just kind of comfort food in JRPG form. Whereas, like, most other ones really are... It's a commitment if you want to play, like, a, a proper... Uh, JRPG from start to finish, like a big long one. I really want to play uh, Final Fantasy 13 at some point, but I know that's going to be 100 hours baseline for the first one, and then I don't know how much for the rest. And like, I don't necessarily mind that, but... I just... I think I'm drawn to games that I don't need to commit my myself to, if that makes sense. It was also a lot of fun seeing how the games changed over time. Absolutely. I'm currently playing Final Fantasy V. That's the one I'm stuck on, actually. I haven't, I haven't progressed very far. And it's odd, because I think it is the one I like the most. I just played too many of them too close together. And I really don't like Final Fantasy IV. I actually found... Uh, I found IV to be incredibly boring. In a way that... Uh, became quite difficult for me to want to finish it. 14, though, is actually shockingly good. I would not recommend it to most people, uh, just because I think I've put in almost 200 hours and I'm still nowhere close to beating it. Well, I am actually. Do we fight the cave spider? I guess we do. Die! Oh my god, my HP is bad. Holy shit, spider. Well, honestly, if there's a time to fight the cave spider, now now is it. I might have to stop, though. Just to recharge. I guess, actually, we might as well just go until it uh, kicks me out. <laughs> go, bacon spider, you can do it. What am I, the bacon? I wasn't allowed to play any video games growing up, so now I'm an adult and I watch and play all the video games. Eh, that's kind of where I am. It's not that the, it's not that my parents directly like prevented me from playing video games now that I'm thinking about it. Uh but there was definitely kind of that that constant uh disapproval for playing too many. Uh so my mother specifically had me commit to 2 hours a day tops. Which I, I mean honestly actually for a kid that's probably a reasonable amount, but as a kid that was really punishing especially on days where I didn't have anything else to do because there's definitely just kind of like well what else do I do with myself go outside it's like 100 degrees and extremely humid why would I do that and admittedly that was the summer I got to play as many video games as I wanted and it was lovely uh, and I mean I guess what I was supposed to do was focus on school but uh, why focus on school when your future lies in playing video games for a living. <laughs> my mom actually enjoyed watching my sister and I play video games growing up. I think my parents, uh, namely my mother, uh, my mother had kind of a, a idea of how things were supposed to be as a kid. Oh, right. I should probably read this. Spider removed. Well done. The path to the other side of the cave appears to be clear now. However, it seems like there aren't any berries on the other side. It does look like there are some kind of trees, though. Oh. 
I should explore the exit, but I should... I'm going to get my fish as I can. Um, but so my, my mother very much had kind of the idea of like how you're supposed to go through life. You know, get good grades, go to college, get a good job. Um, and that I think... I don't want to say that I was the disappointing son, but I very much was the... Uh, <laughs> bacon spider senpai, no. Um, but I, I I don't want to say that I was the disappointing son, but I was definitely the... the of my brother and I, I was the one that definitely took every left turn I could. Um, much to, I think, my mother's chagrin. And so... Uh, you know, I was, I was the one that was pushed to get the summer job, and my brother never was. I was the one pushed to go all honors. And my brother, admittedly, just did him anyway. Because that's where all his friends w were, and I think he liked school better than I did. Um, but so, for my mother, there was always kind of a a friction in terms of like where I was going with my life let's see there might be something else to gather oh maybe we can find a, a new food type that's actually even better before I die I mean who knows it might even be a, a new fruit that replaces the berries That would certainly be lovely. Okay. You made it to the other side of the cave. It looks like there are apples hanging from those trees. They look edible. Apples! Oh yeah, so it just outright replaces... What? It outright replaces my berries. However, the apples are damn good, so now we're just... Well, I'm glad investing in my farming skill was actually worth it. Okay. So, cross the lake or a bridge. Wildlife on the other side of the lake, however, you'll need a bridge to cross it. So I gotta build the bridge first, and boo. That's gonna take a while, ain't it? Yeah, do we go for more inventory space? Yeah. I'm gonna finish collecting apples, though. Mainly because I might as well just level up my, my farming while I've got the opportunity and build up a, uh, a supply. And we're getting pretty close to just the death threshold. Because once this gets up to seven, I start dying and there's no way around it. So at this point, we're pretty close to just apples killing me. Uh, chugging apples until we just die. But that's fine. As far as ways to go out, chugging apples until you die is not the worst place to be. <laughs> How do you get the degradation down? Building houses prevents, uh, or prevents, it reduces the, um... Uh, ba ba ba. Building houses prevents the degradation, or reduces by half, give or take. So when I built the murder hut, it made it so that my health was only reducing by so much. Cook fish. Uh... I guess I could actually cook some fish. Not sure if it's faster. It is a little faster. The problem is, uh... It still, I think, takes longer? It doesn't matter. I'm dead one way or another at this point. Yeah, picking apples is about the same as how much HP you're losing to degradation. Yup! Like at at this point we're we're sunk, but the entire point of this is not uh is not to survive, but to level my farming skill as much as possible so that uh the next time I come here I can just suck down apples way faster. Um Let's see. I think the somewhat practical thing would also be to just invest invest in stone cutting just level it up a little bit more but oh well and yeah the the longer this run goes the more hp i get though honestly once again i could have 100 hp and it would have about the same effects because the more hp i have does not actually change how much it degrades okay there we go also thank you shakira for the 54 month resub damn thank you 
How are you doing this fine and lovely evening, Shakira? So there are two parts to each level, blue and yellow bars. Yes. So the blue bar is meta progression. The yellow bar is in run progression. Uh, so if you look at this, it says generation and instinct. Generation is your current uh, your current runs level, and instinct is is kind of the uh, the levels they've picked up from run to run to run. Uh, generation is a five percent multiplier, and instinct is one percent. But it's a one percent to the compound, so it's gone from just a times one multiplier to a times one point eight three. So the the uh, the longer I do this, uh, the faster I'm just going to be at fishing overall. And so right now, I'm going to probably ignore the rest of these things just in favor of trying to turbo level my fishing and cooking as much as possible. Uh, I should probably focus on wood cutting a little bit and stone cutting because the, those are the big things that slow me down. Uh, so in that case, yeah, let's actually just dig stone until I starve. Because if I can get this, this multiplier up, it's genuinely going to be better for me. I'm going to run out of food pretty quick. But yeah, that, that speed multiplier is slow. See, the digging is slowing you down since you lose a lot of HP while digging. Yep. And I'm dead. But it's fine because now we can do some things. I do not know how I want to do these, but that's fine because here's what we're going to do. Ignore the berries. Build the hut. right now my health degradation is so low that I can effectively just go full starvation mode. Get out of here, berries. We want hut. Because unfortunately hut requires 20. Yeah, it's going to take a little while, but it's fine. I must charge for hut. And I mean, the other thing is my base berry farming is just so fast at this point that even if I do decide to go for the berries first, it's 10 seconds to get 10 berries. That's not bad at all. And that's just, like, generation level 1. I can only imagine eventually it's going to be just light speed. I turn uh, berry priority down. I think I'm just going to put wood priority high. Same thing with the, uh, the wooden hut. There we go. Eventually I'll have to mess with my priorities a little bit, but still. So what if you get, uh... On finishing the hut with one log short. You just don't finish the hut. You have to have ten logs. That's it. Okay. So skip that. Immediately explore cave. I am very late. That's fine. There's always the VOD. Or the YouTube videos. Or tomorrow. Unfortunately, I'm a hungry boy, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to go too much further, but we'll see. At dinner with my brother and his wife. Hey, that sounds lovely. I am I am looking forward to finally being able to go out and have dinner with my family again. Okay, so I'm not doing that good. Let's see. Do we get the campfire? No. So I think we want to just cut all of the wood we can. I think I'm going to skip the cart because it makes it a little, little bit harder. Because we want to dig stone, then hut.
Let's see. Digstone hut. Wood hut. Wood stone hut. There we go. Kill spider while your life isn't draining. Ah. Uh, Okay. Kill spider. I th I don't know which is more practical. I think actually I'm going to pause. Stop catching fish. We are not catching fish. Um I think I think I will say the stone hut is a better priority. You want the stone hut before the spider. Because it reduces the amount of damage that the spider does. Um, it reduces the amount of damage the spider does to me. And... Um, and also my overall degradation. Uh, because the lower my degradation is earlier, the slower it progresses. So while killing the spider would give get me access to a much better food source, I it's still ultimately going to be... No, oh, damn it. I I don't actually like a lot of the automation stuff here. Uh because it throws me off. Okay, so we want to do cut wood followed by stone hut. Because the other problem is Jack off here keeps uh I mean here, fine, let's finish the hut finish that for a moment. I'll just let him gather berries. Because, yeah, unfortunately, it, it prioritize, prioritizes other things. Mainly probably because I haven't actually built enough of these. Oh, yeah, I gotta build... I gotta do that nine times to actually get more. Oh, unsurprisingly. Okay, stone... Are we back on the stone hut? Yeah. Wait, how do you wear the hut-like armor? I have no idea. I think it reduces spooder, spooder damage. It absolutely does. During combat, health will decay. Health decay increases by five. Oh. No, you're right. It's just a flat increase. I'd still say uh, getting the hut down sooner is still better. Because once again... Well, there might be better resources on the other side. Uh, let's see, you spend less time on the apples. I Not by much, though. I'm like, that's still a minute lost that gives this time to stack up by a fair bit. I think maybe on later later runs, but even then, you like if you go lightning fast early on, and you have almost no health de degradation. It's going to take a while to scale up. I, I still think getting the huts fast is the way to go. Okay, dig stone, got plenty of wood. Unfortunately, we're currently just at uh, just a little bit bo below replacement level. Let's see. Good idea to kill spider early, increase combat earlier. Eh. I'd like the combat skill is nice, but you're not fighting a whole lot of stuff yet. Because for me, the biggest slow points are wood cutting and digging. So these are these are the two things that I need to level the most. Combat, like sure I waste a minute on it, but I spend so much more time digging. Let's see, you know, wonder how's it going? I'm getting deep into a, incremental games, and I feel like it's a mistake, but I'm doing it anyway because they seem fun. Actually, looks like I think I have all of the stone I need. 
So all I have to do is just recut wood. Yeah, six more. Yeah, I'm just gonna let this slowly kill me. This is why the max health is so useful, because it, it lets me kill myself. Uh, <laughs> it, it lets me effectively ignore damage for a little while. In favor of getting major projects done sooner. How fast do I gather a berry at this point? Eh. Oh, no, no. 1.54 times per second. That was not immediately clear. Okay, cool. So now we're back below replacement level for a bit. We are going to need some food. I think I'm going to get the wooden cart at this point just so I can get some extra stuff. There we go. I see. Just played Rogue Command because I watched your video and I lost multiple times. I it's, it's a hard game. I'm honestly shocked I won. I think only won with a couple of minutes to spare, and even then, just barely. I'm looking forward to that game though. The uh, the developers have already reached out to me and they're like, "Hey, you want to be included like for our our you know inevitable release on Steam?" And I'm like, "Yes, keep me in the loop. That game is great." If you guys haven't seen the video today, Rogue Command is a RTS roguelike fusion. They also said it was a deck builder, but I, I don't agree with that. Okay, now I can kind of set, set this at reasonable priority. Because I do want my fishing level to be nice and quick. Though there is, there's a very real possibility that if I get fast enough, we actually just stop fishing and don't fish. Yeah, it has cards, but it doesn't have the placing animation. Nor the deck management, nor like drawing cards or anything like that. It's got a lot of the motifs, but it doesn't actually have any of the immediate gameplay. Play the 8-bit army series last time I needed a con command and conquer fix. I liked the 8-bit armies games with one major exception. I really did not like their over-reliance on uh, WMDs. That I like I was getting nuked left and right constantly, and it just wasn't very pleasant. Um mainly just because like it wasn't very enjoyable to constantly like just expand out a little bit nuclear launch detected and I just lose my entire bl base and it's just like what no come on yeah super weapon race is awful yes I I don't feel like super weapons belong in RTSs like that's that's the one thing Starcraft got incredibly right is that there was one super weapon for the most part and it was the nuke and you it was really awkward to use PvP, like proper PvP, is the best part of games like that, though. I get, yeah, eh. I think for, I think for some people, my problem with a lot of RTSs is, is that it feels like they're too based on the idea of PvP, and uh, it often results in a much less interesting single-player experience because they're so reliant to it. Let's see if we, like RTSs. If you ever played Sins of the Solar Empire, I ha yeah. I, Sins of a Solar Empire is weird. It's like almost good. Because I found the general strategy from my perspective to win was just to go, like, never expand my army, just pick up nothing but just tons of heroes. And then, um. And then just save money for expansion. And then eventually dump it all into a super army once I ha already had everything. That worked. But it was definitely kind of awkward and weird. I think we're thinking of the same game. I'm pretty sure we are. Sins of the Solar Empire is the one where you have kind of capital ship heroes. Uh, I guess they're capital ships, not heroes. But tomato, tomato. Um, it's the one made by Stardock. And it kind of looks like a real-time strategy version of Endless Space. My one problem is that... Uh, what is his name? Brad Wardell? 
whoever the CEO of Stardock is, is an absolute turd. And so I, I know people always tell me that I need to separate the art from the artist, but I really do not like playing games where my time or money end up supporting someone that I, I think is a terrible person. And so I very much stayed away from, um, let's see. I, I don't know. It just doesn't feel good to me. Because there's so many games out there, I might as well support the people that I think deserve it, if that makes sense. You know, really nice, wholesome people. Let's see. Still waiting on the ho release of Homeworld 3 to play the Homeworld game? So I actually played Homeworld 1 about a year ago. I'm only okay with separating the art from the artist once they're not getting my money from it. Yeah, when they're dead. Like, I, uh... I got mixed feelings on... Oh, what's his face? Um, H.P. Lovecraft. Dude was kind of a terrible person, but at the same time... Um, uh, at the same time, he is long dead and he, uh, nobody owns his stuff anymore because it's just uh, free now. And so it's just kind of like, all right, cool. I still don't really like a lot of Lef Lovecraftian stuff because it's done terribly, but... Uh, yeah, HP who, who? It's just totally a Cthulhu mythos. I'd like to some degree, I'd rather rather be developing somebody more wholesome's like overall legacy, because it's still tied um, to Lovecraft, but it's still not as problematic. Okay, so we can pick apples, but we don't really need to. I guess let's make the uh, stone cart really quick. Wow, yeah, we are we are here so much faster. The whole two minute two minutes early. It's a good run. What is my wood cutting? Uh, every one point three seconds. We're getting there. It's not quite fast enough, but we're getting there. But yeah, do not do not let my uh my limitations ever inspire you to limit yourself if you want to play a game regardless of who makes it like the be my guest uh i just from my perspective it's always just kind of my excuse for why i don't play it especially because there's so many other games to play too like that's that's the wild part is like sure i could i could separate the art from the artist and still appreciate the artist's work or i could you know go uh, appreciate some other artist's work who makes equally good art just maybe in a different uh in a different way. Live my life by what would Wander do? <laughs> I mean, honestly, except for my inability to remember whether or not I enabled auto payments, I'm actually doing pretty well for myself, shockingly. But then again, a lot of that boils down to I don't do much, so it's kind of easy to just not worry. Let's see, are we just endlessly catching fish here? I mean, that's fine. It'll probably be worth it. Okay. We are mildly at fish replacement levels, so we could we could put ourselves on a bit of a uh, negative feedback loop where we just alternate between one or the other. <laughs> Easy to do everything right when you don't do anything. Yes. Okay, looks like I'm gonna need some wood. But once again, I wanna I wanna get my wood and my stone cutting skills up as high as possible. And so this kind of puts me in a good position. So is this game browser based? No, but it's three dollars on Steam, so almost browser based. It, from my perspective, anything that is. Uh, Ten dollars or cheaper is just kind of an insta buy from me. It's like, is it on sale? Who cares? I'm still going to, I'm still going to have a blast with it. That's where I'm at with this one. I'm having a good time. I got to go back to playing that. You must build a boat game too. That one kind of has a very similar energy to this. And the only games I've, I've played are free because I'm broke. That's fair. Oh shit, I. Uh, we might actually need some apples. We are... 
we don't have enough HP. Okay, save me apples. Whew. Oh, right, there's a demo and it's bloody long. Yeah, somebody said it was like 90 hours. So I think you absolutely can get the uh, the full experience. Whew. That is punchy. Okay. That said, um, I think I might want to go back to catching fish once I have enough apples. Let's get like five. And then we'll switch to catching fish for a bit. Because what I want to do is mostly focus on stone cutting. Because yeah, if I can if I can dig stone really quick, that's going to make getting the huts really really fast. And then also, then the bridge and a couple other things too. Okay. What do we think? Should this be my last life? I think this will be my last life for today. I'm actually having a good time with this, and I wouldn't mind playing some more. But it's also one of those that I could easily shelve it and maybe try one more game. Actually, no, it's nine. I'm hungry. This will be this will be my last run, especially with this whole talk of alternating between apples and oh boy, I'm going to die here very momentarily. Whoop. Apples will save me. Clear this queue for a second. Yeah, I got 15 cooked fish. Yeah, I can maybe do this. At least for a little bit longer. I just want to get a little bit more stone. I don't think I'm going to get to the bridge side of things, but at least I'll level my... Uh... I will level my farming skill to be, like, nice and super fast. There we go, 2.01. That's going to get even nuttier as we go further. How fast are we picking apples, by the way? Pretty damn fast. I think we might even want to just, uh... Probably pick apples until we die. <laughs> just furiously, just long-arming up into a tree and just jamming apples into face. Because, yeah, that's... Part of it is, if I if I let it just continue like this, my farming skill is just going to continuously grow kind of exponentially. On the flip side, I should probably still let fishing just do its thing. Might still kill me, though. Damn, that rate of replacement is scary. Nope, died anyway. All right, well, one way or another. My farming skill is at times uh, 2.05 and it's gonna get even faster. I I did not realize that these would, would be compounding, but that means every run is worth it, no matter how much you goof. Oh yeah, my fishing isn't too far behind and my wood cutting and my digging. Digging is gonna take a while and combat's gonna take forever, but it's fine, it's fine. It's a neat game, I like it.